So you want to peacefully move on from your ex-partner and stop the intrusive thoughts that are keeping you from actually living your life and doing what you desire. Well, good thing that you are here in this video because I'm going to show you exactly how to shift those intrusive thoughts so that you don't accidentally unblock your ex or text him and you actually are going to make plans for your future without that person because that's what moving on is truly all about, right? So tune in because you are going to receive some actionable steps and also to allow you to really dig in to where these thoughts are coming from because the reason why those intrusive thoughts are still there is because you haven't fully processed all of the emotions yet and all of the things that need to come out still need to become out still need to come out and process and in this video there are going to be four steps and questions powerful questions that you can ask yourself in order to finally live your meaningful life so first things first, you really want to understand this concept, which is whatever we experience in our day-to-day -day lives, aka the symptoms that we live through, are pretty much just the surface level of what is actually going on internally. And what do I mean by this? So for example, you have this itch that you just want to text your partner, you want to talk to them again, and you want to start reliving uh, the happy memories and you're pretending and living in the past and you can't seem to break away from that. That experience, that feeling and what you're actually doing is just a symptom of an underlying unconscious problem. And so what we are doing today is we're going to map out this symptom and then go really deep as to what um, the actual issue is that you want to face that is in the deeper layer. And why do we want to do this? We want to do this because if we just work on the symptom problem, for example, blocking your partner, um, you know, and putting your phone away for a certain amount of time when you want to text him, sure, that can work. That can definitely work. And it's not about discounting that. It's about knowing that though what you're doing is really just a surface level symptom and a surface level solution of what you need to be actually looking at deeply. Okay, so let's take this example here. Say you are experiencing all of these three symptoms, right? So the first one is wanting to text your ex. And then the next one is reliving the memories, especially the happy memories of the past and pretending that things are still happy and joyful and all the things. Meanwhile, it really isn't right. There's a reason why you left in the first place. So really reliving those happy memories, not because you are making at peace with them, but because um, you wish that they were you wish you were living back in the past. That is when it becomes a problem. Right. And or you're hoping that will part your partner will change their mind, change their ways, change themselves for the relationship to work. Now, we all know logically that these three things are something that really isn't going to help you move on, right? You know this logically on an intellectual level. level you know that these three symptoms that you are experiencing isn't the best way that you are going to move on, but somehow these are still present. Why? Why? Why is, a, is the best question, right? And so really, this is very individualized for you. So this is where the actual work happens for you. Unfortunately, healing work isn't easy. It requires you to dig deep. So when you think about this, why do you want to text your partner? Why are you really reliving the past? And why do you want your partner to change, knowing full and well that we cannot change other people, right? What is the reason for that? What is the feeling that you're feeling right before you want to text them? What is the feeling that you are craving when you want to relive those happy memories? And what is something that you have romanticized and idealized in your mind that is making you feel an emotion that makes you want to hope that your partner is going to change? So be really clear on this. And I know this is going to make you want, uh, this is going to really 
um, bring out a lot of truths, right? A lot of uncomfortable truths, but this is the real work that you get to do. So write this down. You can journal this out. You can talk this out, whatever you need to do, but being honest with yourself with regarding to these questions and what emotion, uh, hint, hint, you want to get into the emotion. Like what emotion are you seeking? What emotions or what emotions are you running away from, right? Write this down. And of course, pause this video, do it. And if you're a bit stuck, I'm going to give you a few examples. Okay, so this is an example of the feelings that you really want to tap into, right? And so when you think about, you know, texting your ex-partner, maybe it's because you feel lonely, right? And, you know, loneliness isn't the only thing, right? All of the emotions that you are feeling down. This is where you get to just lay it all out and dump it all out. Like, do not hold back, girl. Just do it. Um, and again, these are just examples, right? But really dig deep. This is this is for you, right? That you are doing this for yourself to gain some clarity. So why do you want to text them? Is it because you feel lonely? Is it because you're missing something? You know, you're missing them. You're missing the relationship. You're missing whatever it is. Uh, you're missing some sort of feeling that you uh, used to feel when you were with them, right? Could be that dopamine rush too of, of being with that person. Um, and when you, you know, relive this happy memories, maybe you're also um, wanting to feel happy again, wanting to feel uh, loved, right? Wanting to feel um, all of that. And, you know, if when you have the, when you hope that your partner changes, like, what, like, why do you want that? What is the feeling behind that? Are you scared of the unknown? Because now that you've left, um, it means that you get to live life without them. And that is scary rightfully so it's very valid to be scared right so what 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 are the fears there right as much as you can these are just like three small examples but write all your what ifs right write all of your what ifs write all of the things that you are scared of write all of the things that you are worried about because all those fears all those worries and all of these feelings um, that are distressing is what is causing you to do all of these right so this is just one layer we get a few more layers deeper after this but you know unless you actually get to this deep layer and you are honest with yourself with this and you don't you know look through it in rose colored glasses then these symptoms are going to keep coming up because these feelings are is what drives what are what drives all of these behaviors right so this is the part here where you get to just dump it out like i said before keep dumping it out put all of your feelings all the way down and trust me you will feel better afterwards so write this all down and just after you write them down, look at it and read it and look at how much um, and be proud of yourself for how much you've actually put down and uh, been honest with yourself with. Are you ready to go layers deeper? Of course you are. Of course you are. Right. Um, and so the reason why we are feeling all of this, the re there's a reason, again, as to why you're feeling all of those what ifs all of those fears, which are valid, and all of those distressing emotion. And one of the reasons why is because somehow you have an unmet need uh, deep down inside of you that is wanting to be met, an unmet need that needs to be looked at and addressed by you. No one else is going to address this need. It is just you because you are experiencing it, right? This is how you get to care for yourself. This is what self-care is all about. It is it, it is about meeting your own needs because unfortunately, no one's going to do it for us, right? We are responsible for having our needs met first before we can give it to someone else. And I know that if you're in a relationship, probably for a long time, you have maybe put your own needs aside and then gave it to the relationship right but now that you've left now that you are ready to move on it is now time to redirect all that time energy and that give a fuck back to you so what is the unmet need here if you look at when when you looked at all of those things right when you looked at all of those fears all of those distressing emotion what is the theme out of all of it what is the need that you need to give yourself in all of it. And if you don't know, if you don't know, 
pause and then ask yourself the question, what is, what do I need right now? What is it that I need to be giving myself right now? Ask yourself those questions and then write them all out down here. So pause this video and do all of that. And also I will give you a few examples. Okay, so what came up for you? Write them down again. So there's no right or wrong answer here, right? There's no right or wrong answer here. These answers are coming from you, which means it is the best answer for you, right? So don't overthink this. Just allow uh, allow your subconscious to, to do all the work, right? Allow yourself to just dump it all down. And so you know, these are just examples again, and whatever you have on your sheet is definitely right, right? But these are the examples once you go deeper as to what, you know, what unmet needs are um, that that have come up when you ask yourself a question about the feelings of the fears and the what ifs. And so, you know, it could be love, it could be connection, it could be wanting to feel safe and, and happy, right? And if you look at this, it makes total sense that you want connection if you feel lonely, right? It makes total sense. And then it makes sense that you are craving love if you want to, if you feel like you're missing something, if you're feeling lonely, which makes you want to text your ex, right? You see, you see now the pattern here, right? This is what you want to notice with your, with your patterns and your emotions and safety, right? Um, being scared of the unknown is a normal thing that all humans definitely have all humans are scared of the unknown it's a survival mechanism right this is how we evolved because you know the unknown means it's a saber-toothed tiger around the corner and our ancestors needed to be scared of that because they needed to survive they needed to be scared of that so that they know to watch when wherever they went you know, and we still evolve to have those biological reptilian mechanisms, um, which is great for us, right? It helps us survive. But at the same time, we feel this in our relationships. So safety is actually definitely something that is, you know, very valid to, to crave, right? It's a val very valid need that needs to be met. And happiness, of course, right? If um, if you're crave, like if you're reliving happy memories and you're down here and you're like, yeah, I need happiness happiness well of course that just makes sense right um and you know if you're missing something you know maybe you were missing happiness right maybe you're missing uh inner happiness and you know truth of the matter is the the biggest thing about peacefully moving on is to first start being peaceful internally because it doesn't matter what we fix in the outside if the inside doesn't match the outside the outside it doesn't matter, right? You cannot change the outside if it's an inner problem. And so by doing all this, by committing to this, you get to find your own happiness, your own love, your own connection to yourself, your own safety, which is key to peacefully moving on. So when you look at all of these needs, right, and you may have more, you may have less, um, you may look at this and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's true. Or you may have something that's not on the list. But either way, look, look at what these cravings are. Look at what all these needs are. And these needs are very valid because all humans require these needs, right? We have evolved to want these needs, to require this these needs for survival. And so when you look at this, this is where, where it gets to be like mind blowing, right? When you look at all of this, when you look at the connection, when you look at love, when you look at safety, when you look at happiness, be really honest with yourself here. Is your partner the only source of all of this? The answer should be no, girl. The answer should be be no, right? Because truth of the matter is we can find connection uh, with someone else. We can find connection. We can find love with other people in our lives, right? We can find safety somewhere else and we can find happiness, not just with a person. And the, although sometimes it may feel that they're the only person because they've been your primary bond, um, uh, emotional bond for the longest time, truth of the matter is you can connect with yourself, right? You can love yourself. You can find safety in yourself. You can find happiness in yourself. You can find happiness in your closest friends, your connection, love, and safety within your closest um, friends as well. So when you look at this, this can be, you know, what 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 sometimes what we do when when our long term relationships is that we 
um, we think that all of this can only be met by that partner. And once that partner is gone, then uh, it's difficult for us to feel this way, right? This part feels missing. The truth of the matter is you can cultivate this internally. And this is exactly what I help my clients, right? I help them rewire their their thought patterns and their emotionals and their emotionals, their emotions. Um, they help them regulate their emotions so that they can find connection, love, safety, and happiness internally. So they no longer need to seek it externally. When you're no longer able to seek all of this externally, if you can imagine, just imagine this, you can connect with yourself. You can give yourself the love. You can give yourself the safety. You can give yourself the happiness. If you can do that, if your glass is completely full out of all of this, do you think you want to text? your ex-partner no right do you think you want to relive those memories in the hopes that it were there no because your perspective will shift and you're like uh it wasn't that happy at the end of the, the marriage anyway that is why it ended right you're able to see that perspective more clearly if you can find you know safety love and connection within you do you think you are going to believe that you can change your partner or if your partner can change no, you're not going to believe all of that, right? So the change has to come here. The change has to come internally. And this is why the work that I do with my clients is so profound. And this is why they're able to peacefully move on because they are able to give this to themselves, right? So, you know, this is the thing. And it doesn't stop here, right? It's not just enough to know all of this. The next thing is to be able to take the action steps for you, to give yourself all of this, right? Um, and so the the very big question is, how can you give yourself all of this? All right, next step. Next step is to ask yourself, what do you need to do? So obviously you may or may not be able to read that. Uh, don't come at me. I know I have terrible handwriting. I already know this, okay? <laughs> um, but when you look at you know this third layer here about connection, love, safety, and happiness, what do you need to do to get that, right? And you ask yourself this, what do I need right now so I can feel connected, so that I can feel love, so I can feel safe and it and I feel happy. What are the action steps? Write them down below. This is one of the most important steps, right? Because like I said, it is not enough to just intuitively know this, how you actually repattern your mind and how you actually move on is the action steps because you're training your mind to know that you can give the, all of these things to yourself. And once you can train your mind to know that you're giving, um, all of this to yourself and you actually follow through and act upon it, then, all of these things will eventually, um, with consistency as well, and if you're doing the right things and you're asking yourself the right questions, all of these will also start to dissolve. All these feelings will st start to dissolve. Will they ever, ever go away? Probably not 100%, but you'll be able to actually do the next step and move on and plan your life without that person. But it first has to come with what action steps are you actually going to take right now? What do you need to do to feel all of this basic human need? Okay. So what have you written down for yourself as your action steps? I have some examples here um, to also help you with the momentum if you're feeling a bit stuck. But what are your action steps? What you write down is actually more important than when I what I write down, right? Because you know you the best. Uh, but I'll give you these examples at first. And let's do it. Let, let's, um, I'll give you one example from each of, of these unmet needs, right? So the first one, what do you need to do to feel connected? Well, maybe you need to do some breath work and take a few breaths so that you really ground down and be more in tune with your body. You know, that is a great action step, right? So do it. Make sure sure that you take the time to do the breath work it doesn't really take that long to, to take a few big deep breaths right so I mean I mean as you're watching this you can do that now right um, another thing is love right how can you give yourself love what do you need to do to give yourself love well maybe you can give yourself a compliment um, give yourself one compliment you know and make this actually specific right like give yourself a compliment whenever you do something good or just when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed at night give yourself a compliment right that's an example but make sure it's very very specific 
Um, and then safety. How can you feel safe? Well, maybe you just be present in the moment. Whenever you feel like wanting to text your, text your ex, then um, just be present in the moment. Just be present. And then, you know, how can you give yourself the happiness? What do you need to do in order for you to become happy? Well, what makes you happy? You know, I just put here watching dog videos because that's what makes me happy. Watching dog videos really lights me up. So maybe it does for you. Maybe it's scat videos, right? Maybe it's, you know, videos of squirrels, whatever it is, right? Um, do something that just makes you happy and make sure that you um, you do this consistently. Like if you're, if you're wanting to do all of this all at once, that's even better. Maybe you make a habit of doing it the first thing in the morning or before you go to bed at night or, you know, um, as you after you eat some lunch, uh, after you do some work, right? Make sure that you actually schedule this all in because this is one of the important things that you get to do. This is this is what self-care is all about. It's not about the bubble baths. It's not, <laughs> it's not about the mani-pedis or the massages. It's doing this work and following through on what your intuition is telling you. So I hope all of this helped. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you and I will see you soon.